wow, was this an awesome game. I'm playing against Haseo9388. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, but uh, I haven't had any two remarkable games and I've been working a lot. Hope you guys are still with me and ready to see some very cool magic. So, as you can tell by the title, I'm playing Yisan the Wanderer Bard. And my opponent is playing Edric Spymaster of Trest. So, very, very good commander. Blue green. Uh, banned in uh, Dual Commander, also known as French 1v1, uh, the more balanced format by far, but uh, definitely a very uh, powerful commander. And I make a big misplay in the beginning here, and I'll point it out, but other than that, I have a definitely keepable hand. I have turned to Yisan. Against Edric, there, I definitely would not keep a hand that does not have turn to Yisan, but on top of that, I also have Survival to go with it. And some one drops to get me going, uh, if somehow Yisan dies. So this is definitely a great keep, and my opponent keeps as well. I'm on the play, and my uh, just good luck, have fun. We don't really chat much over the game. Uh, and they mulligan to six. Sorry, I said keep. They mulligan to six, but they have gemstone caverns. Uh, oh my god, what a beating. Uh... They just start with extra mana in play. It must be nice. I've considered this for the deck. Um, I'm not sure if it's if it fits right or not. Although, it doesn't come in tapped, so there's not really a drawback. Most of the lands are forests anyway, so there's uh, it could be a good utility land to include. Um, so I'm going to go with turn 1 Arbor and uh, get to parity off his caverns. And... He's going to forest pass, and I'm going to run out Edric. Uh, oh, sorry, not Edric, Yisan. I'm playing against Edric, wow. Uh, Yisan, and they're going to put a sp spell stutter sprite into play for no mana, um, for or for no value, just so they can uh, play Edric and get him for one card. So we're going to keep track of how much Edric draws them this turn. Keep in mind, they mulliganed, and they threw one away, but they did draw, so um, they're at m minus one right now, compared to me. Edric, and that puts them to parity, so they're at zero. So I'm going to activate, I'm going to play Wirewood Symbiote, and now I'm planning on using Yisan on his turn. You can respond to Arbor Elf's ability unlike other mana, mana elves, and I forget that, and I should have just used him right here, because I'm planning Wirewood Symbiote to chump Edric if I need to. Fetch Bird, Block, Spell Stutter Sprite, then I have Arbor, Spell Stutter Sprite was fogged for a turn, but I get Yisan again. Um, at 2, and my my goal is just to move Yisan up while preventing him from drawing as many cards. I should have used Arbor Elf before passing the turn, and it comes back to bite me here in a sec. So, eat, Spell Starter Sprite comes in. I go to activate Arbor Elf, and beating, he rapid, rapid hybridizes my Yisan. I think for a sec, like, Symbiote doesn't work. Um, so... He gets in for one, and he is now at plus one. Or he's now, because Edric is, is a male, he's now at uh, plus one. And makes a land drop, and plays Dork's Skull Clamp, Dork. So, very good turn, but he's down to a single card in hand. Alright. So, maybe I could try to raise this. I do have something uh, stonewalling his ground troops, but he has a Skull Clamp to make up for that. So, I'm at way behind the eight ball here. So, I decided to go for Fierce Empath. And I had a lot of options this turn. I could try to Luxac Oracle. I know he's he's not countering, and he doesn't have force. And this plays around days. Um, Edric decks are decks that will play days, in my opinion. So I could try to go for the Oracle, run the risk of days, and Luxac into lands. But I really don't feel like uh, lucking against him not having days, and there being two lands on top of my deck being good. Fierce Empath is going to get me something that I foresee as long game as an answer to Edric. I don't really, I can't really deal with flyers, and Edric decks almost always play a lot of very cheap flyers. So I'm going to go get my Hornet Queen, uh, which is actually in the deck instead of Avenger of Zendikar, and my god, I'm glad it's in hit here right now. Because Avenger of Zendikar is uh, about 10 tickets here on Moto. So I'm going to fetch the Hornet Queen, flash it to him, and then just sit on this wall, planning to chump lock and try to trade off things if he sends the ground troops along. In with Spell Starter Sprite. Alright, so he's up two at this point. 
and Cloudfin Raptor, which evolves. It's a flyer. Clamp the Mystic. Play land. Play Merfolk Spy. And I think he clamps Tree Speaker. Yep, clamps the Tree Speaker. Because I have ground troops, the things on the ground aren't very good. Island Walker, not very good either. I don't play islands. I don't play the best basic land. I pick up Karametra's Acolyte, which is probably one of my best draws at this point. It's my most efficient mana dork. Um, granted, uh, at this point, uh, Priest of Titania produces the same amount for three, because uh, it, it counts Edric. But Acolyte's going to produce exponentially more over the game. So I ju I'm just going to run it out there. If he has uh, a counter for this mana... Uh, he's got a counter, and I'm going to have to work around it, but I need Acolyte in play to be able to function. Because it effectively triples my mana, in the sense, it makes four when it comes uh, now, because it counts itself. Symbiote untaps it, and the way that it, it'll work, it'll produce four both times, because I'll tap it for four, untap it, bounce Arbor Elf, replay Arbor Elf, tap it for four again. So it'll produce seven mana. 8, 9, 10 mana. So that's that's Hornet Queen mana. Hornet Queen Survival or Hornet Queen Cultivate. So, that's okay. Now, he knows about the Hornet Queen, so I have to keep that in mind. Cloudfin and Spell Stutter. So, now he's at plus 4. Now, I haven't gotten to activate Yisun once this game. So, I've gotten no value out of Yisun so far. Zephyr Sprite and Clamp that. Uh, so, hold on, he's at... Also clamped, so that's plus four, five, six, seven, because traded one card for two cards. So he's at plus, he's basically drawn seven cards over the course of this game. Uh, or sorry, nine cards, but he mulliganed and gemstone caverned. So he's at plus seven. I pick up Fenhorn Elves, which is mana neutral when Karamatris Acolytes in play, so I'm just going to run that out. Activate Arbor Elf. Uh, I learned my mistake. Always use Arbor Elf on my turn if I'm planning to use it. Get my mana back. Think for a sec. He's got a lot of mana up. So I decide to bait with Survival of the Fittest. I don't need it, but if it resolves, um, I'm in a very good position also. So he kind of has to counter it whether I need this in play or not. Uh, because the threat of it is just too much for him to handle. So he goes within the gate, and that's fine with me. So I'm going to tap for 5. Now I could run out the Hornet Queen here. And I decide Hornet Queen's not going to be the play this turn. I am I feel like he's still got another counterspell. I don't want to lose to it. And I, I really want Hornet Queen to resolve because it's just going to stonewall his entire board. Death-touching flyers uh, mean he can't get in and start drawing cards against me. And then Yisan will be able to take over the game. So I go with Oracle. And this is another obvious bait spell. I don't think he should have countered this. Um, but he does. He runs out Essence Scatter. Weird card for an Edric deck, but I guess all Commander decks have one thing in common, that they play at least a single creature. But this is dead against some decks like Loro, which don't play creatures in the, in the deck at all. And rarely cast a Loro. So I don't know if I like Essence Scatter, but it does the job here. But it taps him out. And that's what I needed to happen. So I think of my options for a sec. I bounce the Fenor Elves because it was summoning sick. Replay it off the one floating. And I'm one mana short of being able to deploy Hornet Queen. I have five, six mana here. So I decide now's the Yisun time. Because I can deploy Hornet Queen next turn. This produces one mana because of the Acolyte. Um, and that way I have Hornet Queen plus Yisun activation on the following turn. If I can deploy Hornet Queen. If I find that I have that option. I know he's going to get another three cards and go up to plus ten at this point, because I have no flying blockers. And while that's a terrifying prospect, I have to have Yisan on, uh, lose summoning sickness. And it's just better than playing Eternal Witness Survival, because then I would have to throw away Hornet Queen, Eternal Witness Oracle for no value, or Eternal Witness Cultivate, getting back the Oracle or the Survival, uh, and just ramping out more. I decide Yisan's the more, most important factor, because I, I also have Quirion Ranger in my one slot in the deck, and I can use Quirion Ranger to get uh, untapped Karametra's Acolyte and Wirewood Symbiote to untap Karametra's Acolyte, making a ton of mana next turn if I untap with Yisan. So I could play around any mana leak type effect at that point. I also have Symbiote to bounce, bounce fierce, fierce Empath. I'm living in fear of Cyclonic Rift here at this point. Uh, I've got to expect that he's getting to the point where 
if he just rifts or time walks, I might lose the game. So I need to cut him off of this mana. And my way to do that is going to be Fierce Empath into Terastodon. So he's at Psychrift mana of 7, but he does tap beneath it. Cloud Sprite, fine. Spend your blue mana. And Martyr Frost, okay. Stinger Fling Spider, usually pretty good. Uh, it's my second best answer. It would have been nicer sooner. Uh, stonewall some of the flyers, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it at this point. So uh, I look at my mana for a sec, and I decide that the first thing I want to do is try to get Eternal Witness. If he's going to counter, he's going to counter Eternal Witness because he's going to think that I'm getting back Survival, which is my, which will be my goal. I will get back Survival and play Survival. Eternal Witness, if it resolves, also only costs me one mana because it produces two in Karametra's Acolyte. So I either bait a counter or I paid one mana for a spell. Or two mana to put Survival into play. So, he's going to make me spend all three mana and buy back a Forbid, pitching a Disdainful Stroke and a Viridian Shaman. And I don't know if I agree with this here. I think Eternal Witness probably wasn't the most dangerous thing, but I'm glad that he couldn't use Disdainful Stroke on this, so he decides to just throw it away instead. Now, normally, Forbid in an Edric deck is uh, GG's, but I have more mana than God. T I check my mana, even though it says it there, I always like to check what's in my pool. Um, it's a bad habit that I need to get out of, but alright. So, I make one, make six, and go for the Hornet Queen. And my thought being, if he uses Martyr Frost, I know he can uh, force spike me for at least one, but I have Symbiote to untap Acolyte by bouncing Fierce Empath, and then Acolyte for five uh, to keep this alive, and there's no way he has five blue cards in hand, so I'm in good shape here. I could only lose to force there. But it resolves, thankfully. And even though I paid seven for it, it only, I pseudo only paid four because it's, it immediately jumped Acolyte up to nine. And this is why Acolyte is so good in an Edric deck, or in a Yisan deck, or a Mono Green deck that just wants to do big green. If I could play Acolyte as my commander in some of these decks, I totally would. Um, and I could, I could see it being a very good pauper commander as well. Uh, so I'm going to bounce the Fierce Empath. Even though it's a net loss of two mana when I replay it, I decide that... So I check eight. So I use eight, activate Yis... Oh, sorry, I play Fierce Empath here. And I get Big Papa. Because I cannot let him untap with seven mana... The chance of him having Cycl Cyclonic Rift and me just outright losing to that is too high for me. So, I use Sun, get my Queerian Ranger, use Queerian Ranger, bounce a forest, untap Acolyte. I can actually replay that forest. I've only drawn three forests over the course of this game. Sorry, I drew one. I started with two of them. Make t uh, 12 mana, drop Big Papa in, kill... Gemstone Caverns, because if he regrows it, it's not an island, so I'm turning this off color. And two of his islands. Give him some elephants. He doesn't concede here, which, good on him. Uh, I have four mana. I, I'm just going to burn some of my mana here. I'm going to cultivate, get some more into play, and I'm going to set a stop on his upkeep here. Normally I don't run that stop unless I'm planning to do something. So I set a stop on his upkeep to use Wirewood Symbiote and... Queerian Ranger to untap Yisan and Karamatra. He's down to four cards in hand, but he's so short on mana here, I feel a lot safer. Um, he's off blue mana, so I'm not in risk of time walking him time walking me. That said, he's not really going to get value off his time walk with flying death touchers in play. And I'm just going to ship the turn back. I could have played Stinger Fling Spider instead of Cultivate, but I really just want to get more mana into play. Stinger Fling Spider is not going to do too much for me. I mean, it's going to get me one mana in play. But, uh, and take something off his board, but I care more about drawing these lands out of my deck. And I want Stinger Fling Spider to hit something like if, if he has something terrifying like uh, Consecrated Sphinx, like if he somehow powers a Sphinx out this turn. So I'm going to bounce my Arbor Elf. I, Fierce Empath has lost its value now that it's already tutored for uh, Terrasteron. Now I can still get Kamal, but I can do that on my turn by bouncing Sim it with Symbiote. And I don't want him to know that I'm planning to reuse this. I want him to think that this is dead now that it's got Terrastodon and Hornet Queen for me. And I'm, gonna, so I'm just doing this so that way I can, before he's drawn a card for the turn, that I have Yu Sun activations up. And right now my plan is to get, um, I could shut off Skullclamp by getting 
uh, Phyrexian Revoker and Naaman Skullclamp, but I really, I don't mind Skullclamp. If he's spending mana to draw cards, I, I'm happy with him spending all of his mana this turn to clamp away things. So he's going to get Trinket Mage, which is an interesting decision, and I, I think for sure here that he's getting uh, Pithing Needle to name Yisan, to just shut off Yisan, but he gets Mana Vault. So if he plays this mana to use Mana Vault and plans to like clamp three of his things, I'm just going to use Yisan in response, name Mana Vault while it's on the stack before he can use it, and shut it off. But he's going to clamp his Martyr, draw some cards, get an Exotic Orchard, and clamp the Trinket Mage and ship the turn back. So I'm going to activate Yisan, and I'm just going to increase my mana count even more, getting my Priest of Titania. And the real goal here here is Priest makes one... Two, three, four, five, five mana, six mana on my turn, and then Karamatra makes twelve, thirteen mana. So this is now mana plus by playing it because it makes one here and one over here. So I'm gonna play the forest, play the arbor elf out, and I believe start by activating Yisan. Yep, and I'm gonna get Izuri. So I have thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Let me put it into play. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 mana, and then use uh, Symbiote, Bounce Arbor Elf, untap that, 20, 37 mana, use Quirion Ranger, Bounce Forest, untap that, uh, 50, 63 mana, activate Azuri 12 times, giving my team plus. 12 by 3 is 36, into is 40, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 elves attacking. At plus 36 apiece, that's 126 by 4 is 24, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148 coming in at, at him. I don't, I'm just going to keep all the hornets back, and there's no way he can soak enough damage, so... Karamatra's Acolyte is the real MVP of this. Despite my misplay uh, on my turn, on his turn three, of not using Arbor Elf on my own turn and exposing Yusan to the Rapid Hybridization, that beast stuck around, or Frog Lizard stuck around all game. But ca this is the real power of Karamatra's Acolyte. Um, this is the most efficient mana producer, um, I think, on the lower end of the curve. I think it's more efficient than a uh, new Silvala Heart of the Wilds. Um, it just does so much, especially in decks with Wirewood Symbiote and Quirion Ranger that I can tutor out. This is the be If you need mana, Karamatris Acolyte is going to be your best source of mana in a Green Swarm deck like this. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the game. Thankfully, it's not too long. Uh, one sec. So, I start making mana, and he concedes there. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Uh, I thought it was a cool come from behind against one of the uh, very good commanders that can punish li little mental missteps like that. Uh, eh, pun, pun intended. Um, but one of the very good blue-green commanders, probably the best blue-green commander that punishes small missteps like uh, forgetting to use Arbor Elf on my own turn before he untaps because I didn't think about playing around Rapid Hybridization or Pongify. But... Uh, this is a very cool game about how Yisan, if I can take control of a game and be patient uh, playing around his counter spells to deploy the thing that I think will uh, cement my victory or, or cement my path to victory, uh, can really show how Yisan takes over a game so incredibly quickly. Because he was up 10 cards over me. He drew 2 to get parity, um, draw for turn, and the first attack beat, uh, unmulliganed him, and uh, played gem got him in g the Gemstone Caverns value back. Um, I don't know, what did he exile? Like a land. Okay. So, he drew 12 more cards than me over the course of the game. I only activated Yisan really once that actually mattered in-game because the second one was just me knowing that I'm going to get uh, another elf into play. Uh, or more mana into play for Izuri to function. Um, so, I really hope you guys enjoyed the game. I certainly enjoyed playing it and recording it. And even though uh, sometimes you're behind and you get your commander pongified because you were stupid and you're really on the back foot, uh, 
don't give up on games that you think are lost just because uh, you might be behind. There's some games where your opponent necroed and destroyed all of your lands and it's right to concede, but uh, games like this, you, you just got to look for the line, and I saw that Hornet Queen was my way to reestablish myself and be patient. So, uh, I hope to see you all in the next one. If you have any comments about other misplays that I made or uh, how I could have played this better besides that Arbor Elf blunder, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I have some more Widwin games that I've been playing. I hope you will enjoy them. I've been enjoying the blue-black myself. I think uh, the next deck that I might want to build is either uh, my Moren deck that I have in paper, which is a, it's a stacks build. I expect people to concede when I play it. Um, or uh, Sidisi, uh, uh, Sultai Sidisi, which I figured might be a lot of fun. I know uh, Tasker is really popular, but I think uh, Sidisi creature combo might be a fun one to build as well. Hope to see you all in the next one. Uh, have a pleasant guy.